Hello. In this video, I was going to do something different than I've done before and do a comparison of credit card lockpicks. I have about 31 cards here from 15 manufacturers, and I was going to compare the pros and cons that I see looking at them. It will be a little subjective. Uh, I was going to start the video off sort of summarizing what I saw as the, the standout features for certain credit card pick sets. And then I was going to go through and look at each card. That could take a while, so I, I was going to start off the video just sort of summarizing with the bottom lines up front. If you want very nitty gritty details on the cards, like dimensions, thicknesses, weights, I look at about 70 characteristics for each card and added them together in a, an Excel table. I look at it for these 31 cards and for the information I could get for some others, I think I'm tracking 45 cards or 44 cards altogether in the Excel table. So if you're interested in very nitty gritty details about what each card has, weight and dimensions, I'll put a link to that Excel table in the description. But for now, I'll just start off with the sort of big overall picture, and then I'll get into looking at each card individually. Um, in the big picture, I'll also talk about what I think is missing and where I think there is potential to improve with uh, the credit card picks still. Okay, so we'll go ahead and jump in. Um, most lock picking tools. Which cards offer, offer the most tools per card? The number one winner for that is going to be Overture Fine right here. They have about 16 tools. I count it as 16. Some people um, may count slightly different than me. Some people may count one tension wrench as just one piece, um, whereas I might see two tools in it and count it as two. Um, but I would say that, hands down, this has the most, most tools in it. Um, this is made in France, this is Overture Fine, version 2 card. Second is the Lockmasters. Right here you can see the Lockmasters card. Uh, this is made in Germany. This I counted up to be 14, Lockmaster version 2 card. Uh, 14 picks. And then third is going to be Grim Workshop Escape and Evasion card also tied with Lockmasters, so I shouldn't say third, I should say it's tied with Lockmasters at 14 tools. You can see it's different than Lockmasters though, and Lockmasters is really concentrating on traditional picks and tension tools, where the Grim Workshop card with 14 tools is really um, looking at like escape, evasion, handcuff, saw, latch, uh, shims, double paw shims for the handcuffs. This is much more escape oriented, where this is much more lock picking, locksmith oriented. But so those have the most tools. After that, um, there's a lot of competition under the 14 mark. Um, there's a lot of different manufacturers that are making similar numbers, but those three stand out for the most tools you're going to get in your pick set. The next one um, is best pick for money going to a good cause. Um, good cause, I guess, is debatable um, for people, you know, what's a good cause, but this is the only one that's going to a nonprofit in the, the list. The rest are commercial businesses looking to make money. The tool pick set is a 501c3 nonprofit organization in the United States. They also have international um, chapters. The United States version of tool is a 5013c nonprofit uh, dedicated to advancing the general public um, about locks and lock picking. So they're the only one in the set doing that. Um, the next thing I guess would stand out would be good instructions or best instructions. I can, um, for a lot of, uh, a lot of people, they may not need instructions, but a lot of people do too. Uh, especially people that might be putting these kind of things in bug out bags. Um, they're not necessarily lock pickers or lock hobbyists but they want to set for an emergency backup in their bug out bag. And in those cases, having some instructions can be handy. Grim Workshop, uh, they beat that, hands down, has the best instructions of anybody. 
Uh, you can see some of them here. That's not to say that these instructions are perfect. Obviously, practice and being able to watch YouTube videos and things like that is extremely helpful. But as far as instructions that come with these credit card sets, Grim Workshop is the only one almost providing real instructions. The second, um, the only other one I saw providing those was from Southern Specialties. They're also lockpicktools.com. They did provide some instructions as well with this credit card set. Not with all of them, however, they did provide it with this one, which is kind of interesting. I'm not, not sure what the logic is there. Um, I don't know, or maybe they do it one per order. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure, because um, I did order all of the ones from there in, in one set. Um, but they also come with instructions. The last one, I'm not even sure. It's not technically instructions, but I want to include it because I think it's it's valuable, and I'd like to see more places do it, which is on the back of this Lockmasters card, they identify what each of the pieces is. And that, that's useful to like for referencing what are you calling something when you're talking to other people to make sure you're on the same page. When you're counting up how many tools something really has, it's useful. And they do have some instructions for how to assemble this Y wrench here too, which I think is helpful because it's not intuitive to know what they're doing there. So they do provide some instructions on how to use the tool. Um, I think that would be a really easy thing for a lot of these companies to add um, something like this, an image pointing out these are the different tools and what they're used for um, on their web page where they're selling these. I think I think customers would like that in general, maybe not just me. Okay, what's another category I've got here? Um, so this one is absolutely very subjective, but I'm going to do um, a best looking category. Um, which ones do I think are the most um, visually pleasing? Um, for first place for this one, let me find it here quick. I, I just got this. I don't. This was actually really cool. This came for free um, from Southern Specialties when I ordered a bunch of their cards. Uh, this one came. It's an anodized version of their Titanium V1. And what's I think really cool about it is there's a set of gears that are sort of um, etched in with the anodizing. I think that's really pretty, and they're also the only manufacturer I've seen doing that. Um, so I think that's pretty unique and a cool feature. Uh, I did not see this for sale yet on their website. I I hope they're going to because I think it's a I think it's something a lot of people would like. The uh, the second grouping I'll put is sparrows, and I'm saying sparrows really in general because they they do a lot of decorations on sort of a lot of their picks. Um, you can see here they add, they got the little bud dr blood drop on the knife, the, uh, the be weary, um, the knife here, the, the spade, the keyhole and the keys, the arrow. They add a lot of decoration on their cards and they, they have themes with their cards in a way that I think is, is cool for decoration. I think it's visually pleasing. Um... And then I guess the last third place one, let me find it real quick, would be Subtle Digs. Locate theirs. Here we go. So this is Subtle Digs. I like what they did here with the, the picks, uh, with the cutouts and the handles. I think it's visually nice. And I also think that it's practical. You can use this to hold on to the picks in the future on a keychain. And if your hands were slick with um, water or oil or something like that, that could give you a better grip. So I think visually that's pretty cool. Okay. What's another category that we have here? I've got some notes over here I'm looking at. Uh, best for reuse. And when I mean reuse, I mean some of these, um, these tools, when you break them apart, um, for instance, tool gives you this little vinyl pouch that you can drop stuff back in. But a lot of these tools don't have a great way of keeping track of the picks after you've used them. It's sort of a one-time thing, and then maybe you put them in your pick set. So I would say first place for these are going to be the cards that are using these hard cases. Um, these are like generic 
hard cases from, from China, uh, made to look like credit cards. But they hold the picks inside, and you can slide it open and close. And once you use the picks, you can put them right back in here and close it up, and it's just, it's in the exact same shape it was originally. I think that's nice. I think that I would like to, I like that functionality there. Um, you can find these, um, a few different places sell these, just the generic ones from, uh, from China. Um, Southern Specialties also makes their own version of it where they, where they upgrade the picks inside of it a little bit. Um, so if you're interested in that, I don't think it's even a significant price difference. So I would lean towards the one from Southern Specialties personally. Um, and then I guess second place for that would be the ones from Grim Workshop. Grim Workshop's picks have a backing material on them that is sticky, but it doesn't leave a residue on the picks. I don't know what that material is, but it seems to work very well for sticking the, the picks back onto the material without losing them. I think that's pretty neat. And then I would say third place for this is going to be from Shomer Tech. Find them real quick. And this may not be intuitive, but if you look at their card here, every single tool on it has a hole in it, which means that after you use it, you can put these on a keychain or something like that. Or you could put them on, I've seen people that um, make like earrings and decorations out of these kind of things. Um, but there's another way of retaining them, um, like on a keychain or something like that. And they also put the hole in the, the tension wrench, um, which you don't see everywhere. So I think that that's why I put them in third place there. There are some other companies that are using different backings. A lot of them leave residues on the picks, which I'm not a fan of, or the backings tear, which I'm also not a fan of. It's, it's not really guaranteed reuse if the backing is going to tear up. Um, there's also a lot of companies providing um, sort of vinyl, paper, or plastic sleeves uh, to, that they ship the picks in, uh, a lot of times with the company logo on them. Um, so that's what I would say is best for reuse. Um, so the next set, the next category I would do is like, is best covert style picks. I say that with like, um, a big grain of salt. And I kind of want to show you something here because I think it's important because a lot of these, I think when people, when you have a credit card pick set, there's sort of two sort of themes I think you're going with either as a backup tool for when you don't have anything else or as a covert tool to sort of to sort of sneak in somewhere or sneak past somewhere. Um, as a backup tool, you, there's not, not too much to worry about. You have a, um, a lot of room. But when you start looking at covert, then you have to see, well, how do you hide it? Uh, one thing I would like to talk about real quick before I go into it too much is one of the big limits with a lot of these is the titanium. Um, well, actually, before I do that, I'll show you my three favorites, I think. But I just want to say... I think there could be a lot of improvement here. Um, and I'm not putting these in any particular order. These are just, I think, um, the best options at the moment right now for the, the covert style. Um, right here we have the covert card from Shomer Tech. What I really like about the covert card is that it's on the back of a Panera card. Uh, this is a card, and they don't just do Panera, they do different gift cards, they do different credit cards. So you don't necessarily know what it's going to be. It's not something everybody's going to recognize. And But it, it does look real from this angle right here. If I left this on the table, it looks like a Panera card. I like that. The backing, I have pros and cons about. I'll get into that in the details later when I go through them. But essentially, uh, this, isn't, um, this is a detectable um, by a, a metal detector. And the backing is not covert. Uh, so that's a, a couple of big limitations there. I'll just leave that here for now. Uh, the next, I guess, big one on the list would be this one from Peterson. So what Peterson's done is he's made some stickers that you can stick on to the cards on each side. And that does have the effect 
of hiding the card. I think you can see looking at these stickers, it's definitely better than nothing, but it's also, uh, they, they don't look perfectly real. They don't look as real as the Panera card. And you also have nothing. These are made, uh, I, I'm not sure what metal these are made from, with steel, but they are definitely, they're not titanium. They are detectable by a metal detector. And I guess the last ones that I think make a really good effort are going to be the ones from Southern Specialties. Um, let's see here, one second. So Southern Specialties has a lineup. Um, they have a few options that are available in titanium. And I think that that's um, in the right direction. When I get into the details, I'll show it, it doesn't work perfectly because it's still detectable by a metal detector. They also offer the modified version of the, uh, the just the plain generic credit card version. Um, this is also not very much, but it's still better than nothing. A lot of these cards don't come with any sort of distraction, any sort of gimmick or covering to make the card look like anything else, but they do offer this option and they do offer titanium options. So I think that's going in the right direction. However, even these titanium ones, um, I'll show when I get into the details of each card, are detectable by a metal detector. Um, to maybe not as detectable as some of the other metal ones, but they are detectable. Um, and I'll go through that when I get into the details on them. Um, so that's the overall, the big picture, looking at the picks before getting into all the, the nitty gritty details. That's my sort of summary on them. Um, I guess one other thing I would like to talk about as far as summaries go before I get into go through each individual card is what I think is missing in the cards um, from sort of a big picture standpoint um, and my sort of wish list for for them going forward is there's if you're not worried about covert if you're just looking about worried about having a backup card or an everyday carry card or something for the bug out bag I think that's covered. I think you will find uh, somewhere in the list a card that's just right for you, whether you're more worried about escape or you're more worried about having the lockpick tools or you're more worried about the looks of it. I think there's a card that, that has you covered. Where I think that they're missing is in the covert area, where you're trying to take a card through a metal detector somewhere you're not supposed to have lockpicks. Um, None of these cards, except for one plastic one, which is used for shimming a door, um, were able to avoid getting picked up by this Garrett Pro Point all-terrain detector. Now, this isn't the same as a metal detector you would walk through, and it's not the same as a necessarily a wand detector, but it is a metal detector. Um, it's not a particularly expensive one or fancy one, and it did detect all of them. Um, so I see that as being a, a pretty big limitation and the, the coverings. So to get to the wish list, um, I got about six things here I would like in an ideal covert card, and I think other people would appreciate too. I would like the face to do the same thing that Shomertech does with the real gift card face. I think that that's a really nice... Uh, I think it works really well at hiding the card. Um, so I think that this just having a plain gift card on the front is a good idea. What I also like about this is if you take this apart, this gift card itself is a tool. I can use this to jimmy a door. I can try to cut it and make other tools out of it. The plastic itself is also a tool. So I like that. The second thing I would like is titanium picks without a signature. That's easier said than done. Um, I guess I'll go into a little more detail on that one. I'll show you um, measuring titanium picks with the metal detector. Um, but the signature can definitely be reduced. That's how I'll put it. Um, I'm sure that, you know, with the right metal detector, you could pick up any of these. But if you see on this card, there's a lot of extra metal here that's not actually needed for the picks. And that's all more metal that can get picked up by a metal detector. If I look at, there's a Maritac, also makes one. Let me see if I can find theirs real quick. Here's the Maritac titanium set. 
once again, we still have this metal around the outside we're not using for anything. So that's extra metal to, to leave a signature that doesn't actually have a use. That's something I would do. I would get away with either turn that metal into tools or get rid of it. And in the case of a covert card, I would continuously be checking it with a metal detector. And if it starts to set that metal detector off easily, then consider removing it. I think it would be nice to have a pick set that reliably does not set off a metal detector. The third thing I would like to see is holes in the picks. Um, and that's, I sort of mentioned on earlier with subtle digs, how they have a nice, nice set of metal, I guess a good amount of the metal cut out. Sorry, I'm just looking for it real quick. Yep, they cut out a bunch of the metal on the handles. I like this because it, it reduces weight, it reduces the signature if you're using titanium, it allows you something to hook on if you're going to try to turn them into some sort of jewelry later on or if you want to hook them on a keychain or some other, some other way of maintaining them. The holes let you do that and I think they're visually pleasing too. Uh, so I think there's a lot of advantages to cutting out these holes. I imagine it does increase the price to do that, although I'm not sure how much. I, I'm, I'm not familiar with that. I'd be interested. Um, but I do think that that's going to be a, a big advantage. Uh, the fourth thing that I would like to see is I really do like the backing material from the Grim Workshop. Sorry, that's on the set too. The backing material that they've come up with really does work well. Pull this out real quick. See that? I don't have to worry about tearing that backing material. I can feel this. It still feels smooth. I don't feel any sort of any sort of stickiness. I can roll it right back on there. And they also have this backing, this sort of, I don't know if it's vinyl or what, but this backing right here can also be removed and it'll now stick to something. Um, so really what I would like to see is the, let's see here if I can show you, the Panera front, but instead of this backing that's some sort of like sticky styrofoam or something that tends to rip and leave a residue, this backing from Grim Workshop with this cover, um, and it would be thinner than that. Um, and I think that that would be really helpful for reuse. Um, and continuing along with that, I would like to see, this sort of goes down to what Peterson is doing with the, with the stickers and the pictures. Instead of just having plain white here, if you use some sort of sticker there, um, you would then have the front and the back of the gar card covered. Um, and if you can make it peel off and you've got something sticky, that's, that's cool too. That's a nice feature. But really having something on the back here to sort of hide it as well would be a nice feature. I don't know how easy or hard that would be, but I'm just listing a wish list. Um, and then once all that's done, I think the last big feature that would be nice to add to it would be instructions like these right here. Um, actually, this one's really just showing you what's in the card, but let me show you a good set of uh, instructions that came with some of these. Okay. So this is neat right here. It doesn't have to be some huge manual on everything, but something like this, and then whether you do it on the website or whether you include it in, the, in a little sheet to be a tag along, the, the same thing as um, Lockmasters has saying, hey, here's what the different pieces do. Um, this is what's included in your kit or your card. Um, so that would be my wish list. I think something I would really like to see in a card moving forward. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's sort of the big picture overall. If you're looking in for really detailed stuff, once again, I would go check out the description, um, the, the Excel page I'm going to put in the description. Um, that being said, now I'm going to go through each card that I've got and let you get a closer look at them. Um, and this, this might take a minute, so we'll just get started and start going through them. This is in no particular order, by the way. Um, 
yeah, this isn't like by manufacturer, by preference, anything like that. This is just the order they're showing up in these, these books. Um, so the first one we'll look at, this is the set from Tool. Um, it's a nice set of hooks. This is kind of cool because it also mimics their Necessary 9 set that they sell. It's engraved on both sides. I, uh, I like that it mimics the Necessary 9. I like those the pick selection here. I think there's some pieces here I'm not sure exactly what the purpose is. Like this bar right here on the side, I'm not sure what it's intended for. I don't know that I could bend that and use it as a tension tool. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to use it along with this bar's attention tool. Uh, so it might be that these bars really do have a use, and that's where it would be nice to have something online saying, hey, that's what this bar is for. And it might be that this is excess metal, in which case I think we could uh, turn it into something else. But I do like the set. I like the set of hooks. I like the holes so that you can put this set on a keychain after you use it. That comes with like a little vinyl card with the tool logo on it. Um, that's not the actual one there. Oh, I got a couple stickers in there. But there you can see the tool logo for the vinyl card. Okay. This next one is um, kind of a little history piece. This is going to be one of the business cards from Kevin Mitnick. Um, this is one of three business cards, lockpick cards, that I know Kevin Mitnick had. This is when he was working for No B4. Um, let's see here. Um, the actual pick selection isn't anything too exciting. You've got the one tension wrench, you bend yourself, a ball, snake rake, half diamond, and a hook. I just think it's very novel, and I'm not sure. Um, I know that other people, I think, have done it since him. But it's my understanding he was the first person to do this. If somebody knows otherwise, feel free to comment and, and let me know. Um, but it was my understanding he was the first one to do that. Kevin Mitnick is a very interesting character. If you've not uh, not heard of him before, um, I would check him out. Um, this is another one of Kevin Mitnick's cards. This is from MitnickSecurity.com. I believe this is a newer version. I think I'm aware of three versions he made. Uh, I believe this would be the second because you can see down here at the bottom he has some um, links to Twitter, LinkedIn, um, as well as Kevin uh, MitnickSecurity.com. I believe the very first version of this business card did not have any of the links to Twitter or LinkedIn, and the tension wrench was on the far right side next to an email. Um, and not a website. Um, I don't know if there's other models out, um, and I don't have that third version to show. Um, but that's two of the three that I know of for Kevin Mitnick. Um, this next one is from Covert Instruments. Comes with a little vinyl uh, sleeve to keep it in. This is for jimmying doors. Um, what I like about it here is it's got these two ears here um, to try to catch on to that. Uh, I don't have one out here, but um, there's like a little bar that slides along um, the sort of, not deadbolts, but uh, yeah, you can't use this on a deadbolt. But the, the spring-loaded bolts will sometimes have this little bar on the left side that if it is, let's see here, if it's pulled in somewhat, if it's hitting the strike plate and somewhat in, then you cannot jimmy the door. You cannot push that spring-loaded bolt in. But if you can push that, that bar forward, then it'll let you jimmy it. And so this is meant to sort of let you catch on those and jimmy it. And it has two different profiles to catch on the door. I like that too. Uh, I have used this in the past, and it, it does work. Um, actually, of the sets that I carry, this is one of the ones. I have another one of these that I'll carry on me because it's, it's convenient and easy. So this is Overture Fine set right here from Overture Fine. Um, I never took French. I, I could be. A, I expect that I am probably butchering that. Um, but this 
is his, I believe, a version two card. And it is extremely efficient with the space. There is nothing wasted there at all. Um, I really do like this. It's, it's a really good example of using space really well for cutting, um, for making one of these lockpick cards. Um, with that being said, not a huge fan personally of the website on every single pick. Um, one, I guess like one logo is cool, but I, I'm not just a huge fan of just throwing the logo everywhere. Um, the other thing that would be nice, is, like I've said before, something sort of saying, what is, what is each of these pieces intended for? For instance, the groove in these two picks. Um, I don't imagine that's for no reason there. I, I'm sure that was cut there for a reason, but I don't know what it is. Um, I'm not sure how you're supposed to use that um, with these picks. Um, but definitely a very cool set. has some stuff you don't see in others. with like this warded pick here. Uh, pick meant for like dimple flags and getting the comb picks and the tubular um, turning tool there. Um, so it is, it is really packed with stuff. Um, and I believe they also sent, when I ordered, they also sent candy in the package, which is kind of cool. Um, this next one is going to be a sort of generic, I don't, actually I might have a list of, let's see here, if I have a name for who made this. Um, uh, do I have a name for who made this? I don't. Actually, I, I remember I looked this up. I looked on Alibaba because I've been, you know, I've, I've seen it getting ordered from China and I thought, well, maybe I can see one manufacturer that makes this. And what I think I ended up finding was there were multiple manufacturers claiming that they built it. And I don't know who the, I don't know if that's true, that it is actually being made by multiple manufacturers or if there's one source that's distributing them to, to the mall. I'm not sure. Um, but here you can see the case just sort of slides open and you get a set of picks here. Um, it's a little different in that the, the picks aren't together already. Um, but you can see you've got a sort of short hook there, half diamond, um, turning tool, and then we've got a little S rake and a city rake or five mountains. I'm not sure if there's a difference between city rake and five mountains. Um, but you've got a couple of uh, rakes there. These look usable to me. Um, I do like the Southern Specialties version, how they improved this a little bit more. Um, one of the things I do not love about it is how thick it is. Um, I'm not sure if I can show that on the camera. This is pretty thick. It does manage to fit in here, but I'm not sure that it would actually fit in my wallet. Um, but I personally carry. So that's, that's a little bit of a bummer with that. But I like the design. Um, I do think it's kind of cool. There's a, a version, a black version of this card that I, have, uh, I haven't been able to find uh, anyone selling. I've been looking for it, and I can't find the, the black version. And there's also, I think, a Harry Houdini version of it, but I can't see anyone selling. Um, that's neat. Um, so this is the, and they make a couple, what's this one? This is the Covert card from Shomer Tech. They have a, a name for a couple others. Um, but this one is the Covert card. Um, as I said before, I really like that they use the gift cards on the front. I think that's a really cool idea. I like that I could use this gift card to um, jimmy a door if I wanted to. Um, I'm going to open the backing up on this so you can sort of see the inside. There it says covert card. There at the bottom you can see one of the things I don't love about it, how it starts. It's leaving some residue on the card a little bit and it's even tearing a tiny bit at the bottom. Um, but you can see this is a neat little set. You've got sort of a cycloid rake there, a hook, um, sort of a shim there, or a, something you can turn into a tension tool, the diamond rod. Uh, one of these is a, a knife decoder, and one of these, I think, is one of these is just supposed to be like a bypass knife, and one's supposed to be a decoder, a small knife, a ceramic blade, and a diamond blade, um, diamond disc for cutting. Um, so you can see this definitely has a, a more of an escape theme. Um, these aren't titanium tools, and they do have a metal signature. Um, 
I'll go ahead and show that to you real quick. So I'm turning this on. All right. I'm going to set it to the lowest setting. And I'm just going to let that sit there for one second. I'm going to take my ring off. So you can see I'm just holding the card. And on the lowest setting, we can pick that up. Um, so I think that would be, it'd be nice to see maybe something like the, as I said before, a titanium um, set that didn't show up on it on a, a low setting. That would be neat. But I do like this this card on the front a lot. I think that's that's very, very good choice as far as covert goes. Um, maybe good reuse too. Um, just in general for those plastic cards. There's another one by Shomer Tech. Um, it's neat how it's got the holes and everything. I do like that, that you can reuse those there. The, the finish, I'm not sure if it looks rough, but it actually feels pretty smooth in my hand. I'm not sure if the, the camera catches that, but it, it feels smooth in my hand. Camera probably also doesn't catch very well. This is a really thin set. I think this is one of the thinnest ones I've got. Um, so if you're interested in maybe like Euro profiles or something, this may be more useful with this sort of hybrid hook here. That's kind of a deep hook there. Um, and, and these are relatively big uh, ball and half diamond picks. But the, the thickness is actually, um, it's actually really thin. It's, a, it's interesting because uh, you would almost think that it, maybe that the finish makes it thicker or something, but it doesn't. Um, so I do like that about the set. I think there is a red version available some places, but I, uh, I'm not sure about best places for those two. That's called the access card uh, from Shomer Tech. Okay, the next set is from Peterson. This is also a thin set of picks. Um, the camera probably doesn't catch that well, and if you're you're detailed and in, you're interested in the details of the exact dimensions, like I would say, I would check out the Excel sheet. I don't want to remeasure everything on camera. Um, but those are all in the Excel sheet. But there's a thin set of picks, um, and it, it looks like useful picks to me. See, it has the Peterson gem in there, um, a set of hooks, and a couple of, uh, in my opinion, useful rakes. Um, we get four different turning ends there that are one, two, three, four. Um, the same thing I said with Overture Fine. I'm not a huge fan of the Peterson logos and the copyrights and, and all that on here, I think, um, I don't know, I'd be interested in other other things or cutouts on the picks more personally than the logos. But I don't know, some people do like logos. Um, I am not a huge fan of personal business logos, but but some people do. They, they like it. It's sort of a sign of quality and manufacturing, so... There's some personal preference there. I do want to show the, the stickers a little bit more on this one in case you're curious. Um, so these would get stuck to the, the card. Um, and it's kind of neat how he, he ties it to himself there with the Peterson locksmith tools. That's kind of cool. I will say one thing I didn't love was that when I got these, it did come in packaging that was like soft packaging to try to keep it protected, but somehow it had still gotten bent in the mail. Um, it would be kind of nice if there was maybe some cardboard backing, just some card, cheap cardboard material or something like that to keep these from getting bent in the mail. Okay, this next set is from Oop, I'm going to try to pull it out here. Excuse me. There we go. So this one is from the International Spy Museum in Washington, D.C. Um, I like it because it's from the Spy Museum, and I like the Spy Museum. I've been there with um, family and friends, and I've been there with Tool, um, showing people how to pick locks. So I like the Spy Museum, and that's why I got one of these there, too. That being said... This is probably the least useful set of um, picks in all of all of the ones I have. 
um, it's so thin, I don't believe that you could actually use these as picks on most locks. It'd be extremely easy to bend your pick um, and your <laughs> turning tool as well. Sorry, that was the, uh, the metal detector there. Um, it'd be extremely easy to bend these. Also, one of the things I notice here, and you may notice it too, they, they label each of the picks. So we've got the diamond for this one. Which, sorry, I'm going to turn this off because it's getting irritating. There we go. Um, so, yeah, we've got the, the half diamond is the diamond. Uh, the hook, the short hook, is called the rake. Um, the snake, okay, that's a snake. And the full round, okay, that's fine. But um, the rake for the for the short hook, so I, I just, I don't know, I don't know what happened there. Um, I, feel, I don't know if it was in the design, if it was in the manufacturing, if it was a miscommunication. Um, but as far as usefulness goes, um, it's, I do think it's too thin to be used for much more than shim material. You could try shimming handcuffs and things like that with it. Um, but for actually picking, it's, I think it's very limited use. And I think from the mix up there with the, the type of name on it that, uh, um, perhaps there was some miscommunication or, or something there. Um, oops, excuse me. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that. It's like, I have to be careful just not to, to bend them, just, uh, sliding it back into the, the wallet there. Um, so those are, uh, very delicate. Um, and that's just the, um, if you ever go to the spy museum, you'll get a, a secret mission and a secret identity. Um, and that's my, my card from going there. Um, it's cool. It's a, it's a neat museum. It's fun to go through and they do have a section for lock picks. Um, and you can see a, a set of lock picks that are kind of interesting. Um, they have the, some very unique candles and I know that there's somebody who manufactures ones that look similar to them. Um, but I don't know the name of that style. I'm sorry. But go to the Spy Museum and you'll be able to see for yourself. Um, so this is the Lockmaster set. This one, like the Overture Fine set, you can see that they did not waste any space in it. That's really cool. Um, they've definitely utilized space really well. I like that they've got the, the sort of edges um, cut into the turning tool there. The, I don't know what you want to call them, the teeth. Um, it's, this one also has a set of picks that to me is useful. Like I can see myself using all of these. Um, there's not any picks that I'm like, Oh, that's a, that's a waste. Um, so I do like this set. It comes with this hard case that I have mixed feelings about the, the case itself. It's, it's nice to have something that's sort of a little sturdy to hold it together. Um, so I think that's cool. With that being said, the case itself is too big to go into a wallet, which is where I actually see this being useful. Um, so if you're planning on putting it in a wallet, this case isn't uh, as handy as I would, uh, as it could be, I guess. Um, I like that there's holes in all of the picks. Um, a pet peeve, I would like to see more places putting little holes in the turners too, so that you could hook those onto like a keychain or something like that to hold on to them. Um, and then you can see the, the card here, um, labeling the parts, how to make the, uh, the Y turner, um, the Y wrench. And I don't think that anybody else offers, um, that. I don't think that's in any of the other, it isn't in any other cards, um, that I'm aware of. Um, and this is the, the version two from Lockmaster that, uh, I guess they collaborated with Lock Noob, um, pick set designed with Lock Noob Talon pick, which is cool. Um, it's neat to see them working with people and like lock sport hobby um, and sort of improving designs. So I think that is neat. Yeah, and it is a nice looking set. It, it feels like semi-professional. Um, so that's cool. I should say professional. I, I think that's, that's neat the way they did that. Okay. So going forward. Alright, so I need to, uh, I gotta be honest with you, I don't actually remember the names of all of the ones from the Grim Workshop, so I'm probably going to have to look on the back of them with you while I go through them. Grim Workshop has a ton of options, which I think is nice too. 
Um, so if you know what you want or, or what you're looking for, they, they're definitely a place to check out with all the different options they have. Um, so if you don't like this set, there's something, there's something else there to look at. Um, these are made in the United States, made in Texas, um, I believe, which is cool. This particular set, I like all the picks here. Um, so you've got sort of a pagoda style pick there instead of uh, the hook. I do like the idea of integrating the tension wrench with the pick itself. I think that's a handy use of space as well. I like that it's got the handcuff key and the, the shim and the saw. I think that's neat. And that it, they, in this case, I, I do, don't mind the engraving and specifying, hey, this is what the parts are too. Um, I think that's neat. Um, this one also has the, the backing material. I believe all of the ones from them have that, that special backing for retaining it. Um, once again, the pet peeve with the holes. I would like to see the hole in this pick as well. Um, maybe a hole in the saw as well to be able to keep everything together. Maybe not in the saw, but I would like to see it in the two tension wrench picks so you can keep them all together. Um, that's a nice set. These feel sturdy. Um, they are the Grim Workshop picks. And I should say this, um, once again, check out the Excel sheet for the details. The Grim Workshop picks are different thicknesses depending on the card. They're not all the same, they do adjust. Um, so just because you see one set of Grim picks that's really thick, that does not mean all of their cards are gonna be really thick. They do adjust, um, but they're definitely not as thin as the ones from the, the black uh, Shomer Tech ones or the Peterson ones. They are thicker than that. Um, so this is going to be the lockpick card. Um, you can see I've got a couple of rakes, or actually three rakes, the half ball here and the, the short hook with a, a tension wrench. Um, once again, we've got a lot of extra space here we're not necessarily using. Um, so that would be something I would look at uh, as well. I personally am not a huge fan of the half balls or the half diamonds. I don't ever personally use them. Um, other people might use them more often. Sort of like a half diamond being used as like a flag pick. Um, I guess just maybe the locks I'm picking too. I don't, I don't typically use them. I'm much more interested in a rake or a hook. Um, but that's that's personal preference for sure. Okay, so here we have another uh, sort of credit card um, tool or bypass card is what they're calling it. But um, yeah, another tool for credit carding a door, jimming a door, shimming a door. Um, this is neat because it does have this saw on the side. It's got a um, measuring tool here. Um, what am I thinking? A ruler is the, the term I'm thinking of. Um, and it also has, I'm not, I should look it up. It says it has a saw, Kevlar saw wrap. Um, I think the idea is that you can wrap this up and you could use this as a hook to get certain things like maybe over a fence or, or maybe you could get it to get a, a doorknob or something like that. Maybe you could drop it down through the window of a car and use the, the rope to pull up on like a, a door handle maybe or, or some other type of doorknob. Um, I think that's interesting. Um, I think that's a, a neat idea. I don't know if it's necessarily, depending on the pick, it may or may not be another tool, I guess I would say, as far as listing tools. Because I think that it's possible you could do that with the one from, well, I'm not sure if you could do it from the one from Covert Instruments. I'd like to see some videos on it, and maybe that's my fault. I should go look for those. Because um, I'm not exactly sure of, of the use case and if it's unique to this design or not, or if you can do it with other designs. Um, but I do like the saw there for sure um, and the measuring tool. I like using this other space um, and not letting it go to waste. Okay, and here we have the Escape and Evasion card. Yeah. Um, so this is one of those that was that was packed with features. You can see you've got the saw and shim, key. Um, looks like we've got another sort of like shim up here. Um, we've got a wrap set here. Um, I need to look at how they how they plan on using the wrap there, but 
a little latch hook. I don't know what you would use this for, but it could come in handy for sure. Um, a blade on one side. You've got, this is neat, the, the two paw shim for the handcuffs. I'd like to see that more places um, versus just the single paw shim. Um, combination decoder, yeah, the padlock knife there, another handcuff key. I think this is a neat set. Um, I should play with the two paw shims more. I wonder if there's a case where you want the full shim and you would not be able to use the two paw shim instead. Um, maybe somebody knows offhand if that's the case, but I'm, I'm tempted to say um, if you can go ahead and cut that groove, then go ahead and do it for the two paw shims. But maybe there are certain cuffs where that extra structure comes in handy. Um, maybe. Um, but that is definitely a, a jam-packed set. Okay. So next one is going to be the lock pick rake card. So you can see this has got a lot of Bogota style rakes in it. I'm sorry if that's shining too much. Um, try to get that there. So we've got a sort of a city rake on one side, and then down the line we go from like one peak, two peak, three peak, four peak, and this sort of cycloid here. And then we've got the two turner tools um, built into the pick handles on the left. Um, I do like that. I, I, I can see the use in this, especially if you're you're used to using rakes or these Bogota style picks. This gives you a lot of options. Um, what I'm not sure about is these picks in between. The one, two, three here. Um, I'm not sure if I would be able to, how well I'd be able to actually use those. I guess because you're raking, just being able to get a little grip on it might show that it might, those might still prove to be useful. But there's very little to grip onto there. So that's a, I think that does limit it. I don't know if there's a, another tool that might be more handy there or if you could alternate the directions these are going to get more space. Not sure. Okay. Next one. There's a lot from Grim Workshop. They have a lot of options. Lockpick hook card. So you can see this is very similar to the one we just saw where you've got the two turning tools built into the handles. We got two half diamonds, a uh, sort of hybrid diamond. That sort of has a Peterson Jim-ish shape. It's got that sort of diamond tip, um, not flat, but a diamond point on the end there for that hook. And then you've got one flat hook and one slightly rounded hook. Um, these definitely seem useful to me. It seems like a very practical set that would probably work pretty well for, for picking a good bit of locks. Um, yeah. Um, I think this is just, okay, so you've got some more information from them. This is going back, I guess, to their sort of documentation, but they're showing some other stuff here, how to handcuff shim, or how to shim handcuffs using a tension wrench, um, how to shim a door. Um, so they offer a lot of cool information that I don't think a lot of the competition does. Um, and I think that's something a lot of people would like. Not everybody that gets these um, knows how to use them. So this is the Subtle Dig set. Um, and this one comes with a sleeve here. Um, so let's see that. It's kind of a, a neat sleeve. It reminds me of like a, I don't know, like a fancy business card or something. Kind of elegant. Um, but yeah, this comes with a knife set, the two turning tools. Um, a sort of S rake there, um, like a triple peak sort of Bogota style rake um, or a triple peak rake, um, and a, a rounded hook there. Um, my favorite part about this is definitely the cutouts and the handles. I'm a big fan of that. Um, there is a lot of extra, a lot of space here that's not necessarily being used. It could be. Um, so I would like to, I guess, see some more features in there, some more stuff there. But, but it's kind of a um, I don't know. I think there's something, I'm not sure if elegant's the word, but it, there's something neat about the simplicity to it, too. Um, so I do kind of like the look of it. Um, to me, I think that's neat. It's subtle. So, yeah, it goes along with their, uh, their name there, Subtle. Subtle Dicks. Okay, 
So this next one is from Maritac. Um, Maritac 20, or they call it Mar 20, I think. So this is a titanium set. You've got, let's see here, two small S rigs, um, a ball, a half diamond, and a deep hook there um, with one turning tool. Um, I guess the first thing I see too is these other edges could be turning tools too. There's there's definitely ways to make these other edges turning tools. Um, you may notice it says titanium there. It's my understanding there is two versions of this and their original version did not say titanium on it. I don't know if there are any other differences. Um, I'll show you. Um, and this applies to all the picks I'm going to be showing today. Um, One second, just trying to make sure I have the right settings on it. There we go. All right, so that's on the lowest setting, the lowest sensitivity level, not the highest sensitivity level. Well, you can see I have it here. And you can see that this definitely sets off the wand. Um, just for comparison though, let me show you real quick. Um, subtle digs, I believe this is stainless steel. You can see as I start to come over the edge, it goes off. This one also starts to go off. Um, to me, there's not a huge difference in the distance that I can get the, the wand to these two cards. Um, I think that's something, I guess, to be aware of if you're buying a titanium set. Sorry, I am trying to turn this uh Trying to turn this wand off. There we go, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, I think that's something, I guess a limitation to be aware of with these titanium sets is that a lot of them still set off the wand. And I think that just has to do with the amount of metal there. Um, or I think that's a big part of it. Um, so I think by cutting out any metal you don't necessarily need, you can make something that might be more useful or easier to uh, to make for a covert set. Um, I do like that we've got holes for all the handles here, or for all the picks there. Um, these are definitely some really long reach ones. Um, of all the sets, um, you could you could get further in, in a lock with these than any other um, by far. Um, definitely the longest um, reach. I don't know what you would necessarily need that for, though. Um, I'm not sure what the, the use case is um, for some of these um, being so long. Um, and I think this also goes to a matter of personal preference if you like them to be that, that long. Um, I will slide that back in here. And, oops. One goes here. I double up this one with another one. Yeah, I did. I mix that with those. All right, here we go. Get those back. Okay. And so this is going to be the credit card set from Southern Specialties or LockpickTools.com. So it looks like the housing is the same as with the um, generic ones from China, but on the inside we can see that the picks are, are slightly different. On the turning tool, they have cut in some teeth on the turning tool, which I do think is a nice touch. Nice addition there. Um, for the pick, we've got a, a sort of hybrid diamond pick there. We also have this uh, sort of spoon, um, spoon like reach um, feeler pick um, there. And then we have a couple of rakes. So we got this sort of four peak cycloid rake and a little S rake. Um, and those all look like useful picks to me. They all look like things I could see myself using. So I do. Uh, I do like the picks they've chosen to put in there. And it closes up well. Um, and this one also came with instructions. And these are some uh, stickers. Um, 
that came from the different places. Um, Grim Workshop was nice. I told them that I was um, using these cards that I'm collecting them and you know for collection that I'm not going to be using them for for picking. I um, asked if they'd be willing to sign like one of the stickers and, and the uh, the owners there did. So that's a, a nice addition, I guess, to my little collection I got going. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can remember. Give me one second here. Okay. Yeah, I forget the names of some of these. I believe this is the the Hall Pass version for Sparrows um, right here. Um, to me, this has a lot of empty space. I do like the little keyhole there. I think that's cool. And it is sturdy. I definitely think I could open some doors, shim some doors with it. Um, don't feel like I would have to worry about damaging it at all. I, I would just say that I guess I think that there's some more space here that could be used for other things which normally sparrows is, is very good about getting some stuff in there so i'm not sure why they didn't on this one um their stuff comes with lots of stickers um they're very uniquely themed stickers i should say um you know that either suits your taste or not but i like stickers in general i just like i like how a lot of companies are sending out stickers with their stuff and i think it's cool to get um so i appreciate the stickers um, this next one from Star Sparrows, I believe, is the Flex Pass. Um, it's very similar to the one we just saw. Um, the primary difference being the metal is thinner. Uh, I would check out the Excel sheet if you want the details on the thickness. But this, I feel, is much easier to bend than this one before. Um, let's see another one of their stickers there. This is unique, too, from Sparrows. Um, this is their shimmy card. It's extremely thin. It's very, very thin. It reminds me of the, um, the pick set from, uh, the International Spy Museum. Um, but it's intended <laughs> to be used as shims. Um, so you can see you have some padlock shims here. Um, these shims right here that would, I guess you could be using when you're, um, working on a lock. Um, and then also a, a handcuff shim here on the right. As well as some decorations with the handcuffs. That's kind of neat how they cut that in there. The little padlock and the, uh, the keyway. Um, so they don't list this as being included on their website. It did come with it for me. You can see it matches up to the cutout there. And I think that's to give this a little bit more um, rigidity. Rigidity? Rigidity? Um, stability. Um, they just call it T-Card T. As far as I can tell, this is just a... Uh, like a card that you can use to, to credit card something. Um, I think it's nice that they include it with it, um, but they also don't mention it on the website, so I don't know if that means they don't always plan now on including it or um, if it doesn't always go out. So I don't I don't know any more details on that. Um, but this plastic one is the only one in the set that doesn't set off the metal detector. Um, yeah. Okay, so I believe this is Sparrow's. Um, it's still, I think, called a Chaos card, but this is their Weary edition, Be Wary. Um, so you can see a lot of the cool artwork in there. It comes in this sort of vacuum sealed bag. We've got the two turners. One of the turners has the, uh, um, the edges on the teeth um, there. Um, we've got a little hook, a uh, half diamond, another hook here. Um, you do have a tubular turner there, a warded pick. Um, this one right here on this side you could use as a, a warded pick or as a, a flag, I think, maybe. Um, you've got this little <laughs> knife saw here um, in the middle. Um, this metal is actually fairly thick. I do believe that uh, you could use that, that little saw there and that, that knife um, if you wanted to. I'm going to send some cool decorations with it. Okay, this one is also from Sparrows, and this is, I believe, just the Chaos card. Um, 
So once again, we see the cool decorations with the knife, the arrow, the spade. Comes with a couple of comb picks, a uh, turning tool, a hook, uh, three-peak rake, um, and like this warded jiggler key or just a jiggler key, um, rocker key. Um, and then down here, we've also got this sort of automotive style uh, warded pick. Um, that's a neat little set. Oh, and the handcuff key right there. So that's kind of cool too, how it's got the handcuff key and it's sort of rounded out to make it uh, easier to use. Um, some neat features there for sure. Um, some of these picks, I'm not sure how often I would use them um, or how how much bang you get for the buck um, as far as like when you're actually going to be able to use comb picks or, or this uh, rocker key. Um, for me personally, I lean towards more picks, but I think it's um, there's also lots of options with picks. This gives something, I don't know of anyone else offering this option with the rocker key or this double-sided key or the rounded key. So it gives, you know, consumers more options that they can look at too. And they do do the, the cutouts on the handles, which is nice. All right, so we're moving down the line. So these next ones are going to be from Southern Specialties, um, which is also LockPickTools.com. Um, some of the cases here say Hard Case Survival, um, which is not where I ordered it from. And these also have a Bogota trademark on them, Bogota trademark. So I don't know for sure who's actually manufacturing them. Um, and if Southern Specialties is reselling them for them, or if they are actually part of the manufacturing process, I'm not familiar with that. But I purchased these from a Southern Specialties. Um, this is going to be their version one and stainless steel. You get um, essentially two sets of picks that are the same, the three peak, the sort of Bogota single peak, um, and the two Turner tools. Um, and that's sort of mimicked on both sides. And you can see there's a little V1 engraved there on the side there. Um, very smooth. Um, for me, little handles like these feel hard to use. Um, but I might not be opposed to them if you, if you could pack some more stuff in there. I'm not sure. Um, but I've tended to, to shy away from small handles for just personal preference. Um, so this is the same one, the V1 in titanium. Um, I'll go ahead and show you, um, just for grins. Okay, I'll let this set. I'll show you with the metal detector that we still pick it up. Here it is. Let's see, we do pick it up. Um, that's gonna be true for all of the titanium ones in here. The magnetic signature is definitely reduced. You don't, here's a magnet. We're not picking it up, we're not moving it at all like we would with the stainless steel version here. Um, so there is less of a magnetic signature, but I am still able to pick it up with the wand on the lowest sensitivity setting. Um, and this mimics the, the same um, set of picks as the V1 in stainless steel. Um, in the on their website and i don't know if it looks that way on on camera right now too but on their website the finish looks really rough and when i looked at their website i thought i wouldn't want to use these because the finish looks so rough that i didn't think it would be like an enjoyable pick holding these in person i don't feel that way at all this feels like a nice smooth finish um, it feels very smooth i don't feel roughness on it so I would not have any issues with that. I don't know if other people felt that way looking at the picture. Maybe it was just my impression. Um, but I thought the picture on the website made it look much rougher than it is. In reality, this was very smooth feeling. Um, so it's, it's nice. Go on. Um, this is their version two set. Um, they combine the two turning tools into one, and then they offer some more options for the Bogota rakes. Um, so you've got the double peak, the single peak, the triple peak. Um, I want to say this is called Sabana. Um, I'm not sure if I'm remembering that correctly. Um, 
yeah, I can't remember for sure. I think they call that a sabana. Um, and then you've got the, the sort of short or medium flat hook down here at the bottom. And then they also offer that same version in titanium. Um, and once again, just to show you, we do set it off. Um, but the same set of picks, once again, this is much smoother than it looked to me on the, the website. Um, it feels very smooth. Um, yep. Um, I'm not sure why. They're the only ones I've seen that do this sort of V-cut. Maybe somebody um, more familiar with the manufacturing can tell me why they do that. Um, but I am not sure what the purpose of those V-cuts are. back the case so all of these came with this case um, made in USA with hard case survival on it perhaps hard case survival is the one manufacturing them I am not sure this one they sent to me this is the only only card in the set that I have received for free um, but I really do like it I really like the pattern that they put on here I you know it's near Christmas right now. And I don't know if their intention was at all to have like a snowflake kind of theme, but to me the gearing kind of reminds me, the gearing in blue kind of reminds me of snowflakes. Um, I just think it's a really cool pattern that they were able to, to anodize this with. Um, and I really do like that. I'm not sure if they're going to start offering this to sell at some point in the future, um, but I think other people would really like it as well. Um, and I, this I think is a lot... To me, just personal preference for looks, I like this a lot more than, like, say, some of the etching that some of the, or not the edging, but the engraving that I've seen on the other picks. So I think that's very cool and original there. Um, this one is also the titanium. Um, also gets set off by the, uh, the metal detector there. And before I go into the last, wait, was that it? Was that everything? I think that may have been all the picks. Yep, that was it. We went through them all, all the ones I have. Um, so I think that was 31 picks. Um, in the Excel sheet, I also look at, I mentioned some others, about 10 others. Um, so if you're interested in the details on those, you can look. Because um, I know I don't own every one. I will show you, to because I mean, I've been talking about the titanium a little bit. And that's because... <laughs> I was excited about the titanium, and I was hoping that I would find picks that would not get picked up by the metal detector. Um, I want to give you a sort of comparison, though, um, just so you can see sort of what is <laughs> the limitations um, with these and what are they capable of. Um, so I still have the metal detector here. It is still on the lowest sensitivity. And I'm going to take a single Bogota pick. I don't know if you can see this. I am running it up and down this. And as a single pagoda pick on the lowest sensitivity, I do not set off the metal detector. Um, that is true for all of these here. Um, if I take this turning tool, and you can see I am touching the wand and I am not setting anything off. If I take all three of these, let's see if I can hold all three and I do not set it off. So that is something none of these cards currently do that I would like to see in the future. But I also want to show the limitations of this. Okay, there you go. You got, you're getting a couple of beeps if I put them all together against, against the metal detector itself. It beeps a couple times. Yep, so with them all together, we can set it off um, on the lowest sensitivity. I'm going to change the sensitivity setting real quick. Okay, so now we're on medium sensitivity, and I'll show you the uh, show you how that goes. You can see we're still not setting it off with a single tool. At this point, on medium sensitivity, the turner starts to set it off. When I get about, I don't know what that is, two or three centimeters from the most sensitive part of the wand. 
when I'm further away. Oh. So, within a few centimeters of the wand, it will start to set it off. But up here, we're still good to go. And now I will change it to the most sensitive setting. Okay, let's give us a second to stop. And then you'll see it on the most sensitive setting. All right, so at about a centimeter, maybe two centimeters there, we start to see the pagoda pick setting off the wand on its most sensitive setting. On the most sensitive setting, you see the turning tool, that's more like an inch, I would say. So we're talking three, four centimeters. Yeah, about, I guess, closer to four centimeters. We're starting to set off the wand on the most sensitive setting. Um, so I just offer that as, um, I see that there are probably, there are limitations. Um, interesting. Um, so yeah, there are going to be limitations to, to what you can do as far as making something out of metal and making it not get detected by a metal detector. Um, you can see what the magnets, none of those are going off. And also, this is a pinpoint metal detector for digging up stuff um, for a little treasure hunting and such. It's not necessarily the same one you're going to see at a security clearance. Um, but that being said, I don't have one that you might see at a security clearance. So I can't say if what the differences are. Um, I can't. And I've never actually, um, I've used, uh, the metal detectors I've used, I've never used to try to, um, sorry, I'm trying to turn this thing off. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, the metal detectors I've, I've used in the past, I wasn't looking at lockpicks, so I can't really say how well they work against them. Um, so I think there's improvements to be made there, but there's also going to be limitations on what you can actually do. Um, but definitely improvements to be made for sure. Um, but there's also a lot of lock, cool lockpick cards out there. Um, I don't know. Definitely a lot of neat options. Um, and if you have any questions, um, you know, feel free to let me know in the comments. I expect this will be probably the most subjective thing I... I post on YouTube for the most part. Um, yeah. Um, but thanks for watching.